Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be upgrading my portable planer to a spiral cutter head and I wanna show you why it might be beneficial for you to make the same change. So as you can see behind me right there, I got myself a new eight inch jointer with a spiral carbide tip cutter head and I would like to upgrade the planer so that all of the milling department is spiral carbide tip cutter heads. The surface quality is going to be so much better. This is not gonna be a how to change over the planer. This is more going to show you the difference between the straight blades and the spiral cutter head and show you the data as to why it might be beneficial for you. The cutter head I'm gonna be putting on is a Shelix cutter head from Bird Tool. This is what it looks like right here, pretty gnarly looking. And I'm obviously gonna be replacing a dual straight knife setup on the rigid 13 inch planer right over there. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna take a piece of maple, I'm gonna take a piece of cherry, and I'm gonna take a piece of ash, and we're gonna run it through the planer. We're gonna look at sound levels, we're gonna look at chip quality, and we're going to look at current draw of the planer, and obviously we're going to look at the finish quality. Then we're gonna change out the cutter head to the new spiral cutter head, we're gonna run those same boards through and we're gonna compare that data again and then you guys can make a decision if something like this is worth it for you. This video has been brought to us by mywoodcutters.com who hooked me up with this Bird Tool Helix head. But if you're not after a helical head like this, you can find all of your different straight knife blades over there. I was talking to Stefan and he said something like, thousands of different tools that they have the specs for that they are for some of those the sole source of the straight knife blades and you can get molder blades and all that other good stuff so definitely check out mywoodcutters.com first things first i got my amp meter on one leg of the 120 volt line coming down to the planer and i'm going to be using my cell phone to keep an eye on that so that as we run these different species of wood through with the straight blades and with the helical blades later on we can keep track of that data and see what it looks like. Here are the three species of wood that I'm going to use. A piece of ash, we got some nice curl and a knot right here. This will set us up with a good baseline. I got this big old piece of maple, which I have jointed one side of this. And then we have this super gnarly piece of cherry. And this thing is gonna get wrecked by the straight blades and we'll see how the spiral cutter head does, which I jointed this with the spiral cutter head on the jointer and it looks fabulous. I am going to start the cell phone so that we can track the current, which I got right up there. And uh, we will turn it on and just get a baseline of what it is with just the blade that is rolling. I'm going to set it up so that all of the cuts we take are going to be 1 32nd of an inch so that we're playing apples to apples with this. So again, this is the straight blades in here and we're gonna start off with the piece of maple and we'll work our way down in thickness. So we'll go maple, cherry, ash. Dust collector. So this is the maple right out of the planer. Very good cut actually, but we'll put this under a light and take a look. But let me run through the other boards first and then we'll move over to the workbench. Doing a quick once over here, kind of as expected, the cherry by far has the worst bits of tarot. That's been my experience with cherry anytime I've ran it through a straight blade planer is it just tears out horribly, especially this is a pretty gnarly piece, so to be expected. Then over here on the ash, same thing, kind of around the knot and in this curly section, got a little bit of tear out, and the maple actually looks pretty good. I'm sure if we put this under the spotlight, we'll see some grooves from chips in the planer blade. 
uh, like little lines, but let's uh, get a close in look here with the lights off and see what we can see. Here we are underneath the LED panel light and right off the bat you can see those lines from a nick in the planer blades. Now you can mitigate that by shifting one of the blades over, but you're almost always gonna have this with a straight knife planer. Moving over the knot, you can see all sorts of little bits of tear out and then a big chunk of tear out right there. And then moving down right here, you see this tear out in this kind of curly area right there. Now moving over to the chair, you can really see all of the tear out. Right here, we got some fuzzy tear out. We got a big old groove from the straight knife right over here and look at all that. And that's not even a super crazy area. So moving down here around the knot, you see some serious tear out. This wasn't even hit by the planer, but all this super fuzzy is little bits of tear out. And same thing all the way down over here. And look at all those lines that you can see. Moving over to the maple is actually shockingly pretty good. Um, let's see here. I see a little bit of tear out right there. And then I can feel the lines. It's kind of hard to see on this lighter wood. But maple's pretty soft, so I wouldn't expect too much tear out from there. The cherry, as expected, had the most damage. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this was never supposed to be a how-to. This was supposed to show you the data so you can make an educated decision on whether a helical head was the right thing for you. Now I have shot video of the process and taken pictures so that I can supply them to mywoodcutters.com where they already have instructions but they can use these to touch them up and make them even better. If you would like those instructions, head over to mywoodcutters.com. Okay, we're back together. I didn't have any extra screws. I hope you didn't have any extra screws. Let's turn it on and see if it's together correctly. Looks pretty good from here. Before we run our three boards through with this new cutter head, let's take a look at the chips from the previous straight blades, and then we'll run these through, take an eye at the current and at the sound levels. Let's check out those chips real quick. The other thing that will be very, very different with a helical cutter head is the type of shavings that you get. So this is the shavings that you're going to get now. They're very tiny, many, many little shavings versus some bigger ones like this that have a better chance of getting jammed up in your dust collection system. You can see how big some of these get. Even right here, these are bigger poplar shavings right here. And this is all the new stuff right here. Very tiny little shavings that'll pass through your dust collector real easy. All right, I'm gonna turn it on just like this so that we get a baseline of the current with the new head on. It does look like the current draw is a little bit higher, <clears throat> but I kind of expect that because it's got new bearings. So once those wear in a little bit, it will probably improve with the baseline no load current. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run our maple, cherry, and ash through. Again, I'm going to do a 32nd of an inch cut on each of those boards, and then we'll put them under the light and see how it looks. And pay attention to the audio levels. I don't have a decibel meter, and the dust collector is gonna be ripping in the background, but just pay attention to how different it actually sounds. Again, we're going for a 32nd of an inch cut. So right off the bat, I can feel a massive difference in the finished quality of the wood. It feels like you wet at this with a card scraper already, which is pretty impressive. But let's look at it under the light and take a closer look. 
All right, so right off the bat, look at how much shinier that looks, and there are zero lines across that, which is pretty impressive. There's no tear out at all right here, which there was a little bit before. There still is this big old chunk taken out right here, although I'm willing to bet that that was partly from the first pass with the straight knives, because after that it is perfectly smooth all over here. So very impressed with the ash. Moving over to the cherry, again as you can see, zero lines, so smooth, very good. Through here, uh, actually no, that's pretty smooth as well. Maybe a little bit of undulation in the wood is causing that right on the knot. And then right here, I actually am willing to bet that this is rotted out through here. This is a crack. But right here, you know, maybe we had a little something crazy going on with the wood. Still smooth over that, but not exactly like glass. So maybe I needed to pay a little bit more attention to the grain direction. Although with a helical head, you pretty much can feed any direction of grain and it will cut it nice and smooth for you. But maybe I need to pay particular attention to cherry. Moving over here to the maple, which was pretty good to begin with. I could feel the lines in there with the old cutter head. This one, perfectly smooth ready to go barely i mean i don't even know if i would sand something like this which is pretty impressive if i'm able to cut out a giant long time consuming horrible step like sanding well that is a wrap on the upgrade and the upload of data to you guys and i hope that this video helps some of you out if you are on the fence about making a decision on a helical head like this my quick viewpoints audible level way way down with the helical head it's shockingly different and with it being so quiet on the cutting head itself, it makes the motor sound like it's trying way, way harder. But I really think that in editing the video, it sounds pretty much the same. It's just that the cutter head sound isn't there, so you hear the motor straining a little bit more. Now, the motor must be working a little bit harder because we're seeing quite a significant increase in the current draw of the machine when we are doing milling. Now, that being said, I've seen over 20 amps being pulled and I haven't popped the breaker up to this point so far. And I've put quite a bit of material through there and the motor was getting warm and we were still running, making beautiful cuts. Obviously the smaller chips in the dust collection is a fantastic result and I'm actually getting less chips spraying out of the planer at the end of the cuts. And I would also get chips coming out on the sides with the straight blades previously. So that is another point towards the helical head. Again, I hope this video helped you guys out. Please hammer that thumbs up button if it did because that helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. Be sure to check out mywoodcutters.com if you want to get a head like I have on my planer right now or if you're even looking out for some straight blades. I'm DIY Tyler. i got some sweet new merch on. You can find a link to that in the description below. And you guys have a good one.